July, everybody. Pastor Mike Burns here from Broken Arrow, Tulsa, Oklahoma, coming to you live on Facebook on this 4th of July. And we're very excited about the uh, opportunity to begin another week, especially on this great Independence Day where we as Americans are celebrating our uh, freedom from the tyranny we once knew as a nation. And thank God for the freedom we also have in Christ, our Savior, who has set us free from the curse of the law and brought about a great relationship that each and every one of us can have uh, with God the Father, with God the Son, and with God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can you say amen? Hey, I just want to remind you today how you can uh, make contact with us. We have a great uh, website, mjbministries.org, that I'm sure you would greatly appreciate all the free stuff we have over there. And then we also have uh, our e-newsletter sign up. Listen, we just sent out our July newsletter on the 1st, and I think the, it went out again today to those that didn't open it, uh, but that's the, all we'll do with that. And for you that uh, have gotten it, we hope you're taking time to read it or you'll take time over the next uh, several weeks to read it. And I suggest you don't try to read it all at once, unless you have the time, but a little here today and a little tomorrow and the next day. And I'm telling you, you will be extraordinarily blessed by the July e-newsletter from MJB Ministries. I'm very excited about all we're doing. Uh, this week, we're beginning a brand new series I'm calling Faith in the Power of God faith in the power of God. And, you know, a lot of people don't believe God is a God of power. Or if he is, he's unwilling to use his power. But we're going to talk about what the scripture says from the Bible. And I know you're not going to want to miss the praise God forevermore. Amen. Are you excited? I sure am. And I hope you've enjoyed this day. Uh, And tonight, I know there are many are going to be having fireworks going off in your neighborhoods, maybe uh, in uh, local town areas as well. Be safe and uh, don't be foolish. And I remember my uh, father-in-law used to say uh, to his daughter, my wife, that foolishness opens the door to the devil. (laughs) And uh, I laugh now because I don't, I think it's funny, but because it's true. Foolishness gives place to the devil. All foolishness, the Bible says, is sin. And uh, we miss the mark and we put ourselves in uh, the enemy's jurisdiction where he can legally assault us. So just be safe and be wise and uh, be careful uh, and enjoy all the festivities of this holiday in a safe, safe manner. Praise God. Anyway, let's have a word of prayer before we get into the teaching tonight that I know uh, you're not going to want to miss. Praise God. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the opportunity to have another week of God's healing word taught here on Facebook Live and rebroadcast on at least six other platforms. Use this broadcast to minister life to, to people who know you and those who are about to know you. And Father, I thank you that people today are tired of religion and religiosity. They want the truth that comes from you and your word about all the issues of life. And I thank you that, Lord, people are coming to realize that your word is paramount and that we need to live our lives by the word of God, rightly divided, not religiously divided, but rightly divided. And we'll have accurate understanding because the Holy Spirit, who is the teacher, is here to think through my mind and speak to my lips. And he's here to cause each ear to listen, each mind to be open and every heart to be receptive to the things of the Word and of the Spirit of God. Father, this week we welcome the supernatural gifts and ministries of the Holy Spirit. And we're trusting you, Father God, for signs, wonders, miracles, and even diverse gifts of the Holy Ghost. And Father, for everything that will be said, done, revealed, or manifested in these broadcasts, we covenant with you now at the beginning, before we even begin, to give you all the glory, the honor, the praise, and the thanks for it all. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, and everybody said, Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord forever. Well, I'm excited today, and uh, I want to take a moment to begin this new series on faith in God's power. 
That's exactly what we're talking about, faith in God's power. And specifically, this lesson is called God's Healing Touch. Amen. God's Healing Touch. And so uh, I want you to be ready as we get into this teaching today. We're going to start uh, by reading from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2 and verse number 1. Are you ready here, somebody? I believe you are ready. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Now, even though I have these in red, these aren't as some King James Bibles are in red, uh, the words of Jesus. These are the words of the Apostle Paul. But I just wanted to mix it up a little bit on the slides and have a different color. But this is what it says in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. It says, The word which God... Uh, sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God, oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading the, the wrong verse of scripture. What am I doing? I'm, I'm not supposed to be reading this. Oh, there it is. I'm reading from the wrong slide. And I, brethren, let's get it right right now. I'm so sorry. And I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with an excellence of speech or of wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And he said in verse 4, I like this, in my speech and my preaching, were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Listen to verse five, that your faith, and this is important for you to understand, your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of almighty God. Can I get a good hearty amen from somebody? Amen. God wants you to have faith in his power, his dunamis power, his supernatural explosive power that can literally obliterate the works of the devil, like sickness and disease, like cancer, like clogged arteries that cause strokes or heart attacks. God can do creative things in your life when you give him place by putting your faith, yes, in the word of God, but also in the power of God. Look at this verse of scripture here uh, from the Passion Translation. And I'm still reading it from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, but verses 4 and 5 only in the Passion Translation. He said, Paul said, the message I preached and how I preached it was not an attempt to sway you with persuasive arguments, but to prove to you the almighty power of God's Holy Spirit. For God intended that your faith not be established on man's wisdom, but by trusting in his almighty power. Look what he said in the verse four again. The message I preached and how I preached it was not an attempt to sway you with persuasive arguments, but to prove to you the almighty power of God's Holy Spirit. For God intended in verse five that your faith not be established on man's wisdom, but by trusting in his almighty power. Praise God. And so it's important that you understand that there's the wisdom of men, what men thinks is right, and the power of almighty God. Now we know in Hebrews 1, 3, and I'm not gonna show you that scripture, you can look it up yourself. The Bible says that God upholds all things by the word of his power. Notice he didn't say by the power of his word. The King James says by the word of his power, which I think is correct. The reason I say that is because if it said you know, God upholds all things by the power of his word, that would say that his word has some power. But when he says God upholds all things by the word of his power, that's telling us that God's word is his power. And so thank God today on this 4th of July, and you might be hearing some explosions on the outside about fireworks going off outside of where I'm broadcasting from right now. But understand that God has more power than those fireworks have outside. More explosive power that is greater than the powers that be of men. Praise God for, for more. And uh, there's another verse of scripture I want to show you here as we get into this teaching 
on God's healing touch is found over in, uh, I believe it's in the second Timothy, second Timothy. Uh, well, I don't know that I have these verses here for you, but I'm going to share them with you anyway. Uh, I don't have them written down here, so uh, I'm going to just read them to you here. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, Paul said to Timothy, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now he said people will be, tra be traitors, they'll be heady, they'll be high-minded, they'll be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. In verse 4, that's absolutely a perfect description of the day that we're living in today. But then in verse 5, it says something that is just incredible. It says people have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And from such, you and I are to turn away. Glory to God forevermore. Notice that that, that is a description of much of the religion we see happening in the world today. People are having a form of godliness. You know, I know that for some of you, you like pomp and circumstance, that some of you have been raised in religious tradition. You like when a minister comes wearing a robe or various colors and, uh, you know, women, nuns or whatever come and they dress in certain outfits and garbs and you like cathedrals and you like statues and you like all of those things. To me, and I'm being, I'm being honest with you, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that necessarily, but some people are have a form of godliness but they're denying the supernatural power of God. And the Bible tells us that we're to turn away from such people. Now, this is really a critical, critical scripture that you and I need to understand. Turning away from those who are turning away from the power of God. Now, I started reading this verse of scripture to you a moment ago. And I want to read to you uh, Acts 10. And, you know, this is something that I heard Kenneth Copeland say uh, some years ago, and I didn't understand where he got that thought from. He would say that uh, every place Jesus went, he basically said he was anointed. And he would preach about the anointing that was on his life that he was baptized by John. And I thought, where in the world did, did the scripture say this? Well, look what it says here. This is awesome, man. I love how it says it here. In Acts 10, beginning in verse 36, that the word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word, you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. Well, we know that after Jesus was baptized by John, the Holy Spirit came upon him, lighted upon him like a dove and anointed him. And then it says in verse 38, what exactly happened, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, not Jesus, the son of God, but Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Praise God forevermore. See, here's the thing that many people don't get is that even though Jesus was the son of God, he never did one miracle as the Son of God. He did them as the Son of Man, anointed by the Spirit of God. Now, this may sound confusing to some of you. How can he be the Son of God and yet not be uh, doing the miracles as the Son of God? Well, the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 2 that the Lord Jesus himself, when he came to the earth, he emptied himself of all of his deity, of all of his heavenly attributes, and he became a servant. He became a man. And that's why he didn't do any miracles from the time he was born until he was about 30 years of age when he was baptized by John and he was filled with the Holy Spirit, went into the wilderness, was tempted of the devil for 40 days, passed that temptation, glory to God, and he returned in the power of the Spirit and read from Isaiah 61 in the first couple of verses there, and he said, from this day, let it be known in your hearing that I am anointed. Well, glory to God, from age 30 to the time he was crucified, Jesus did miracles. He healed all that were oppressed of the devil. So here's what I want to say to you today. I want you to get this, that now one miracle that Jesus ever did in his earthly ministry 
did he do it as the son of God? He did it as the son of man, anointed by the spirit of God. Why? Because if he did them as a deity, as a son of God, then we could never have any hope that God could ever work through us as mere mortals, as mere human beings. But the fact that Jesus laid the, those deity abilities aside and became a man and was anointed by the spirit of God, he was saying to you and to me that if we as men of the sons of men and women and mothers and fathers, if we could get anointed by the Spirit of God, which we are as Christians, glory to God, then we can do the very thing that Jesus uh, did in his earthly ministry. We can heal the sick. We can raise the dead, glory to God. We can do all the miracles Jesus did, open blind eyes and deaf ears, and we can cause the lame to walk, praise God. And I'm telling you, we can cleanse the lepers. We can do all of those works, not only with medications, thank God for the medicines that have been developed, but supernaturally with divine power that comes from God and comes from God alone. Now, why do I say that? Well, let me just read these verses to you here because this is where it says what I just got done telling you that although Jesus was the son of God, he never did one miracle as the son of God. God himself does not need to be anointed. If Jesus came to earth as God, though he was the son of God, he came as the son of man. If he came as God, he wouldn't need to be anointed. The fact that he needed to be anointed tells us that he laid aside that heavenly ability. See, Aaron, I said this, every miracle that Jesus did was as the Son of Man anointed by the Holy Spirit of God. And you could find those, that reference in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 through 7. As a matter of fact, let's read verse 5 through 7 in Philippians chapter 2. It says in verse 5, and I'm reading from the King James, the New King James Version here. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God did not consider robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Notice this, taking on the form of, the, of a servant, of a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of men. Now, you might not see what I just said to you a moment ago in those verses I just read to you, but look at verse seven from the New Living Translation. It says, instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. That's what the New Living Translation says. The Amplified Bible says in the latter part of verse 7, in that he became like men and was born a human being. Praise God forevermore. Can you say amen? So basically that verifies and validates what I just got done saying to you based on Philippians 2 verses 5 through 7. Jesus never did one miracle as the son of Almighty God. Can I get a good hearty amen from somebody? Now listen to this verse of scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 through 22. And this is what I want you to see today. It says here, now, the, uh, now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God who also has sealed us and given us the Spirit or the Holy Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Notice the Bible says here that we have been anointed by God. This is believers. He who establishes us with you in Christ. Notice this, we're in Christ. If you're in Christ, God has anointed you who has also sealed you and given you a, this Holy Spirit in your hearts as a guarantee. Other translations say that he gave the Holy Spirit to you as a down payment. This is basically a promise of the future of what God's going to do throughout eternity in heaven. But you're going to have a little bit of heaven on earth, praise God. And God's going to give you what he gave Jesus and you are going to experience the supernatural power of Almighty God in your daily life. Can I get a good hearty amen from somebody? You know, when I talk about the anointing, when I talk about the Holy Spirit, you know, a lot of people think people that believe in that kind of stuff is that we're strange or we're weird. 
But I, I personally believe you, people that, that question that are the strange ones. They're the weird ones because God, everything Jesus did in his earthly ministry involved the supernatural. His preaching was supernatural. His teaching was supernatural. His healings were supernatural. The turning water into wine was supernatural. The feeding the multitudes with the loaves and the fishes was supernatural. Come on, somebody. Jesus walking on the water was supernatural. Jesus rising from the dead was supernatural. See, we as the church are to have an expectation for the supernatural power of God to be in manifestation and in operation in our lives on a regular basis. This is not something that happens every 50 years or every 100 years or every whatever. It can happen every single day of our life if we have been, number one, born again, and number two, been baptized in the Holy Spirit. You see, if you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have been, as the Bible would say in Luke 24, and I believe it's in verse 49, you have been clothed or you have been endued with power from on high. That word endued is the Greek word enduo. It's actually a literal transliteration from Greek into English, in duo or in duty in English means to be clothed upon with power. Jesus said this would be available to his, not just his disciples, but to those who would believe on him through their preaching. And thank God today, we as believers have an ability to not only be born of the Spirit, but we can be filled and clothed with the Spirit as the Holy Spirit who's in us comes up and on us, clothing us with this supernatural power. And I'm going to tell you something, my friend, you need today to say before God, I'm going to have faith in the power of God. Amen. We need to have power, faith in the power of God. Paul said again in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse number 5, that your faith will not stand or be established in man's wisdom, but in the power of the Almighty God. Thank God today we can have faith there. And I want to challenge you to begin to believe for the supernatural power of God to be on display in your life today and every day, not only for your benefit, but even for the benefit of other people. I like what I heard Bob Yandian say many years ago. He said, take your, your hands, positive and negative, and lay them on people as the, as the word of God goes forth. And you're going to zzz, the power is going to flow into them and affecting them, healing and a cure, and drive out demons, and drive out sickness and disease. And I'm telling you, you can turn around, glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Well, I hope you got something out of this teaching tonight. You know, we uh, are trying to do our utmost for the kingdom of God. And I know that uh, you are going to be people who are going to enjoy the teachings of God's word. Amen. Let me again put our information up on the screen for you. And I want to just encourage you to visit our website and sign up for our free e-newsletter that I know uh, you're going to want to receive on a monthly basis. If you sign up today, I'll send you the July newsletter, which you can have. Glory to God. We'll send it to you free uh, by email. If you'll provide your email to us, just go to our website, mjpministries.org. And if you go there, uh, you'll see a pop-up window to sign up for our free e-newsletter. Now, let me just tell you real quick, we have a couple of resources available to you. One is our Discover the Life You Were Born to Live. It's a book I wrote, my first book. I know this book will be a great blessing to you. If you go to churchhappensbook.com, you can order your copy right there. We also do a four-hour seminar, uh, a four-hour seminar that we do. It says it's attempting to reconnect right now. I don't know why. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God forevermore. No interruptions in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord forevermore. Amen. When we do this four-hour seminar called Discover the Life You're Born to Live, it's in churches that host us. It costs $30 per person, and we would love to have the opportunity to share with you uh, about this seminar, praise God, uh, in churches. If you're a pastor and you want us to come, uh, we come on a Saturday morning. It's $30 per person, $25 for the two books that we have, plus $5 for lunch. And we teach this very strategically. We have uh, lunch together. We have a break between each of the four sessions, including lunch. And I'm telling you, you will not 
want to miss having this available in your church. It's based on the book I wrote and the companion study guide, which is based on each chapter by chapter, uh, 90 pages of questions, fill in the blanks, true and false, and all these other wonderful things. We also have our other book, available for pastors especially, I want to send you a free copy of Church Habits, my latest book on the market here. And this is a book that says what your pastor needs from the people they lead. And I'm telling you, pastor, you'll want to have this book and then you want to get copies of it for your people. I will send you a free PDF copy of this book in its entirety, along with book ordering, uh, book ordering discount chart. I will send this to you free if you'll go to churchhappensbook.com and click on the icon that says I'm a pastor and then uh, fill in your name and email address. I will email you a PDF of this book, Church Happens, that I know you will not want to miss, praise God. And uh, you'll then be able to order actual copies of the book to give to your members and to your first time guests. I'm telling you, this book will be a game changer. And also don't forget, we have uh, also available to you a live praise and worship album of songs the Lord gave me, original songs. We did it and recorded it live in Long Island, produced by my dear friend Randy Estelle, who's playing piano in the background, by the way. And uh, let me tell you something. This album was a live recording, all original songs that I know will be a blessing to your life. You can get out on iTunes or if you download digital music. And I'm telling you, it'd be a great blessing uh, to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Amen. Well, we're almost out of time here, but I just want to say one last thing. You know, uh, Friday, we've been talking about uh, things that we really are needing uh, from people to support our ministry. And I'm going to put it up on the screen right now. Ways you can give your support to us. Become a partner by visiting mjbministries.org forward slash giving. Or you can text MJBMIN to 45777. Or you can give a one-time gift on the Cash App, which is dollar sign MJB Ministries. And we will gladly receive it. And I'll be honest with you, right now, we actually need to hear from you today. I know it's 4th of July. I know people are busy with family events. But perhaps tonight you can go to our website or one of these three ways of giving and help us. Uh, in what we're doing every month. We have a budget for the ministry of $714 per month, which does to include other living expenses that I have. Uh, and this is just a bare bones budget that I've worked out. And uh, we really need to hear from you today. Uh, we have some pressing things right now, but we're not under any pressure. We're trusting God and we're believing God and we're believing God with you today. Would you join us and help us here? I believe that God will touch your heart and you will be a partner with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I love you so much. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for being with us. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow as we continue with this teaching on faith in the power of God. I love you and God loves you. And I want to just say to you that Jesus is Lord today. Praise God forevermore.